I'll be the first to say it. The potential for the D2R community to grow and expand is drastically running out of time. The reason being, a bunch of fanboys are pretty much the ones dictating what changes are made to the patch 2.4 before it goes live. Um, it, te it technically is still in the test realm, but um, I just all the updates I see continuously coming from basically the most influential D2R players who have a following. That's who these developers from Vivacious and Blizzard are listening to, in my personal opinion, but if you look at the course of how the 2.4 patches sort of played out, you'll see a trend if you paid the least bit attention. So my goal here is to get my wish list out there as well. I am more of a casual. Um, I do have a life, so I'm in no way, shape, or form a no lifer in this game. I am the first to tell you that the game is not hard. Do not let anyone tell you the game is hard. In fact, the game is broken. So anytime you hear uh, people saying, you know, get game or get good because you have complaints about the game, ignore those guys because they're oblivious fanboys. Um, the game is broken because you can only play it one way. And I'm going to go over that in this video as well as the things I would like to see changed and improved upon. Um, things that keep getting overlooked and neglected as far as I'm concerned. So first up. The game is broken and only plays one way in that if you're a seasoned player you will know the only way to be the most efficient at this game is you start with a sorceress character. The reason for that is strictly for static field and teleport and then later in the game source gear is automatically imbued with magic find. So you can get upwards of 300 magic find without sacrificing damage. That is crucial in playing this game other than just beating normal Nightmare in Hell, which is just repetitive, monotonous BS, if you ask me, because everybody wants to experience the breadth of a character. You know, the the variety of a build that you can do with the character, how strong you can get them, you know, how fast you can get their attack speed, how fast you can get their cast rate, so on and so forth. So yeah, you start with a sorceress, level up your sorceress, magic find with your sorceress so that you can build a paladin, okay? Then you go give all the gear to your paladin, level up your paladin, and just wreck shit in players eight and get runes raining from the heavens because Paladin is way overpowered. And the newest updates to the 2.4 patch have just exacerbated that. They have just made the Paladin more and more overpowered. It's absurd. This character in any other game, I promise you, is a support class. And I'm going to show you the skills the Paladin has for those of you who aren't too keen on playing a paladin because like myself but you probably for other reasons I steer away from the characters that are literally played the shit out of because that shit is so played out man I can't I, I can't stress that enough paladins act to mercenaries sorceress it's just mind numbing so yeah start with the sorceress level her up magic find for paladin gear and then just do everything else with your paladin from then on out. You can finish leveling or gearing your paladin with the paladin. The source plays a very small role, but she's the only other person that plays a vital role. And that is every new ladder or every time you pick up the game for the first time, sorceress is your go-to because you cannot do this game efficiently without teleport and she just has it as one of her skills. Plus Static Field, which I'll cover later in the game, is a level 6 skill, and you only need one stat point, and it's godly. And I have a side-by-side -side comparison, or rather a 
before and after comparison with the sorceress compared to the barbarian, which the barbarian is arguably the godly of the melee characters, which isn't the case. Paladin is godly in magic, lightning, fire, and melee, thanks to the new 2.4 updates. And the paladin also has the most skills that are capable not only in hell difficulty to clear almost all areas, but also to clear them on players three and well players three to eight basically. And that right there is the kicker. Anytime you see videos where they post a hundred runs through chaos on hell difficulty, they don't show you the inner workings. Okay, barely hardly any of them do because they're so like they have blinders on when it comes to queuing other people into how the game actually functions and that is you need a minimum amount of magic find to make those hundred runs worth your time in addition you cannot be playing on players one if you are you're wasting your time I don't care who you are or what you have to say players one is an absolute waste of time okay and consoles even more so and I swear to God drop rates are just for some reason they feel lopsided on console because I was in a, I was in two groups with over 160 people total okay and I was literally the only person who had not gotten a high rune drop and the other people who claimed to have high runes traded because I'm strictly on PS4 because I you know if you want to tell me to you know fork up the money and get a PC by all means I'll start a GoFundMe page you drop me the funds and I will actually use that money for more important things but yeah if you want to support the money for me to build a PC by all means leave a comment and we can get this going I bought a PS4 because I want to play games on the PS4. I want to play games on a console with a controller in my hand. I don't want to build a fucking PC and then keep updating the specs every time a new generation rolls over. Okay? The PS4 is still a functioning console with servers that are supported. Okay? If I was bitching about the PS3, yeah, then I wouldn't be bitching so much and I wouldn't have as much to say in rebuttal to someone trying to come after me. But guess what? is PS4, a fourth gen console. PS5 hardly has anything new going for it other than faster specs and oh, barely improved graphics, this, that, or the other, okay? Those are bottom tier improvements from a true gamer, okay? Not these no-lifers who breed just incessantly off of, oh my god, these graphics, this the frame rate, oh bro, uh, get the tissue, uh. so yeah, okay, that's beside the point guys, anyways, paladin is your last character, with that paladin, you will find all the gear and the runes to level your other characters, and those are just waste of time characters, it's like you've got nothing better to do because you played the game until you're, you have carpal tunnel syndrome, and you've done chaos and bail runs until your eyes roll back into your head and you just don't know what you're doing anymore so you decide to mix it up and then you have all this gear and these runes because your paladin just mows people down he's the lawnmower man so yeah that's why the game is broken guys because you cannot just pick up a fresh character outside of the paladin and the sorceress and expect to really do anything the only other character who I would argue for starting is the barbarian and that's only because he has the find item so you essentially don't clear as fast but you get twice the amount of items regardless because you can loot dead bodies um, but yeah that's neither here nor there because that's so few and far between you don't see it often enough to really make that argument but um, just the video is just showing you the skills with the characters and um, just how limiting it is really the sorceress and the paladin are really the only ones who have any sort of variety or diversity in their builds the other ones are pretty much straightforward and only serve one purpose 
and some of the, I would say majority of the skills are pretty much useless. And um, yeah, it's just, this game's lopsided and it's only getting further lopsided. So we'll get into some of my wish list items here. Um, first and foremost, okay guys, I, I mentioned I play on the PS4 exclusively. Um, and you know, for my own personal reasons, but there's principle behind it, as I covered before. Rune drop rates, okay? This is how I see it. You should not be playing in hell difficulty, let alone anything above players one, okay? I'm not even gonna get into that, but if you go over players one, you just should not see low level runes. I mean, you're seeing L through arguably pretty much all the low runes. There's let's get something straight. The the amount of rune drops is not what I have an issue with. The amount of high level rune drops versus low level rune drops is what my issue is really targeting. So here's what I would like to see. In normal mode, since the quest in Act 5 gives you Ral or Tal, then let's cut it off for normal at Ort runes, okay? You can't get anything higher than an Ort room in normal on a consistent basis. You know, keep keep the other cutoffs the same, similar, because they're not too outlandish, but one through nine should be normal, okay? Then, going into Nightmare, you should only see Thol, which is rune number 10, through, let's say, I think cutoff is Io. No, no, no. Cutoff for Nightmare is Ist, yeah. So Ist is 24. We don't need to go that high. We can keep it at that for, like, really good finds. But I'm saying consistently enough, okay? Whenever a rune drops, it should fall between Thull, which is number 10. And let's just keep it going with nine at a time. So, Ko, okay? Thull to Ko in Nightmare. Then in Hell, again guys, I'm not trying to ask for too much. For those of you who have nothing else to do in life, absolutely nothing, please keep your mouth shut and understand that this game needs more people, therefore people who haven't picked the game up before, okay? We're in a new generation. I should be the one arguing against that, but times change, okay? This isn't asking for Diablo 3 drop rates by any means, okay? This is just asking for some cushion, like some give back to the gamers, because I will cover with you my findings, which should never take place in a video game, especially one that demands so much of your fucking time, excuse my language, with no returns. For those of you who want to argue, it's like pulling the lever on a slot machine. Well, guess what? If you actually gambled and you used slot machines for your outlet, you know when a machine is cold, you put, you leave that machine and go to another one, i.e. leaving Diablo 2 because you ain't getting shit in return and go play another game that actually gives you back the time that you invested. You know, it makes your time worthwhile. So, rant over, getting back to it. Yeah, Nightmare, let's go from Thull to Ko, okay? Then, on Hell, we'll just say, since you can get Gull from, I think it's up to Gull from the Hell Forge quest in Act 4, Hell difficulty, let's just say from Fal to Gull, okay? We don't even have to get crazy with Vex. Okay, if I wanted to push the envelope, I would say two Vex. But here's here's my twist, okay? So foul to goal. Normal is L to Ort. Nightmare is Thol to Ko. Hell difficulty is foul to goal. Here's where I'm going with this. For those of you who don't know, the numbers in this game are astronomical in and of themselves. But when you actually dive into them and get a hard, concrete number, 
you just want to debate it. You want to argue to the ends of the earth. You want to deny it because you're an oblivious fanboy. But the fact of the matter is, for L runes, okay, to get to a Zod rune, Zod is level 33, it's the highest rune. L is level 1, it's the lowest rune. I'll give you a second to guess. Just guess in your head right now. Give out a number. How many L runes do you think it would take to get to a Zod rune? Eh, whatever number you came up with, unless you know it, is not even close. Get this. Wrap your head around this. 14 trillion L runes. You cannot even compute that into man hours played in a game because it is literally impossible. Okay? So this is what I'm getting at here, guys. Raising the the minimum rune drop in each difficulty, meaning if you're a nightmare, you cannot get anything below the thull. You cannot. If you want those runes, go play in normal. Then it gives you more reason to jump back and forth between difficulties. Okay? So, you can't get anything below thull in nightmare. You can't get anything below foul in hell. The reason I say this, 14 trillion L runes only breaks down fractions at a time the higher tier rune you go. So I'm saying like, if you wanted to, let's say if you even wanted to get to Zod from Gull, it is still an outlandish number of runes and gems to get there. I'm talking hundreds of hours of play okay don't even change the drop rates of those higher runes above goal vex to, to zod don't touch them leave them the same but allow gamers more possibilities to rune up to craft to get to higher runes because the amount of runes that drop in hell that are low runes i'm talking l through let's say soul let's cut it off at soul okay even though I would consider anything below Lum to be a low rune because they ain't worth shit. They're not in very many rune words and they have very little uses. Okay? Those should not exist in Hell Difficulty and especially in the consistency that they are. Like the, the amount they show up is just infuriating. Every time you hear that rune drop sound, it's a fucking low rune, I promise you. And it will drive you insane. It drove, drove me insane because here's the kicker, guys. Here's, here's the end all for this statement. Okay. I leveled my character from October. It was off and on, basically, from September uh, through October. That's when I leveled my character. Then I set the game down because I'm like, holy shit, this is exhausting. Then I picked the game back up in December... And I did nothing, I promise you, I did absolutely nothing but hit all the rune find areas. Mind you, this is on PS4, Hell Difficulty, Players 1. Because there's no community on players on uh, console, PS4 console, let alone people who just want to find items. They're all just one-track minded, trying to get to level 99, which, more power to them, but guess what, you know? Get a fucking life, bro. Fight back against this game. Have a voice. Freaking voice that opinion. And just stop trying to tell other people how they should play the game. Maybe you should get on board with, oh, maybe we should allow a little leeway, a little more cushion, a little more give, a little more slack so that more people can enjoy the game and there's a larger community. So... Yeah, that's, okay, my rune, dra my rune drops, okay? From December to February when I set the game down again, which is why I made this video, because I saw the last updates to the patch 2.4, and I'm far from even surprised that it's going the way it is. It's just, it is what it is, you know? I would be an idiot to expect anything different, even though my, ho my hopes were high. So, from December to February, okay? 
Now let's say, yeah, okay, that, we'll say that, three months, okay? I was doing absolutely nothing but hitting all of the, the supposed areas for high rune drop rates. High runes with higher drop rate ability, okay? It wasn't until the very last day I played the game and I decided to put it down that I got my first high rune drop. Okay, mind you, up until then, I only had maybe five lem drops and one foul. So that's my uh, like highlight of three fucking months doing absolutely nothing. But and I was playing like upwards of five hours a day, guys. Five hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah, I don't like to admit that. Nobody likes to admit how much time they they actually play Diablo 2. That's why there's the uh, ability to hide your online presence now with the new patch uh, notes. But regardless of that, five hours plus a day, seven days a week for three months, and the goal. I, I, draw, I dropped a goal room, okay? I was done. Absolutely done. Not a Vex, not an Ohm, not a Low, not a Burr, not an Ist. Or, excuse me, not a, um, a jaw, a fucking goal room. One that you can get from doing the Hell Forge. And by the way, my Hell Forge drop was a foul. So I just let the guy fucking have it who I was playing with. I'm like, I don't want that shit. Anyways, okay? That's what I have to show after three months. But the even uglier side to that is runes were dropping all over the place. I, you know, so for those of you who want to say the rune drop rates were increased in the last patch 20 years ago or whatever, 100 years ago, yeah, you're not wrong. Runes do drop a lot more frequently than I, than probably anyone wants to admit. And guess what? That's not the problem. The problem is what tier rune drops. Okay, I, I was barely getting mid rune drops. It was, and I didn't pass up a single rune in those three months guys I didn't I picked up every single rune and crafted to make them as high as I could but guess what when you're up against 14 trillion L runes there's absolutely nothing you can do in a game that is designed to literally suck the life out of you and basically shut you in a dark room and demand hours of your time just to get a little back in return Okay, I did everything guys, cow runs, Travancol, Lower Carast, Bale, Chaos, River of Flame, you name it, I fucking did it, okay? Don't come in here and tell me, well, you didn't do this right, Arcane Sanctuary, you gotta go there, you gotta kill the ghosts, I fucking killed the ghosts, okay? I went to Arcane Sanctuary, I farmed keys, alright? Let's just drop it, okay? High rune drops, take that into consideration when you play the game next time be like oh yeah it would be kinda cool to you know play each difficulty for you know a certain threshold of runes to drop and craft to make my own okay like I said it's not too out there in left field um, the video right now I'm just showing you the before and after comparing a level 10 sorceress with a um, a one skilled static field taking out blood raven and uh, Griswold, and then I will show you the Barbarian, who is level 18, afterwards to show you the difference in damage, and the source is arguably better at chopping them down, and if I had the time I would show you Diablo and Bale as well, but yeah, it is what the spell says it is, it cuts their hit points without even touching them, you just have to be within casting range, so it can't miss either. Um, Anyways, finishing off my wish list, I only got the first item because that was the most uh, controversial one and one that has been really pissing me off a, late, a lot lately. Just um, the whole gambling thing, guys. If you have a gambling addiction, don't let it spill out into the fucking gaming community, okay? Go to a casino and get it out of your system. Anyways, I would like to see a new act, you know, Act 6. That'd be pretty cool. Um, in addition to that, maybe drop it like a DLC, maybe add um, a new class, like a new playable character, 
and a new mercenary as well. Uh, that would be kind of cool. Um, maybe finish Act 4. Finish um, the uh, Chaos Sanctuary. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just... It was mentioned, you know, a number of times that a lot of people feel like Act 4 was never really finished. And um, I kind of get that feeling too. And I think, you know, it was even mentioned on the devs part that they were strapped for time. I don't know. You know, there's so many conspiracies. But all in all, it's definitely not a full act because it only has three waypoints. And none of the characters in, like, the NPCs have uh, dialogue for quests. It's mostly just Kane and Tyrael, but, um, and there's no mercenary. So that would be kind of cool if they finished Act 4 and added a mercenary. Um, as far as what that mercenary would be, I don't really have anything on that. Um, just, I guess it would be cool to, to have a new mercenary to get uh, more options out there other than Act 2 mercenaries. Um, on that, though, on Act 2 mercenaries, there's a number of things they could do to sort of start to p steer people away from the Act 2 mercenary and that is just make him less godly. I mean that's really what it boils down to. So one of the ways I guess is since he's a spear class with the jab skill, don't let him use fucking axe class weapons. It makes no sense. You don't poke with axe class weapons, you swing. You know, swing, swing, chop, chop. With the spears you jab. You jab, you stab the motion that he has the skills for. So yeah, it's limiting, but so is the Act 1 mercenary, okay? She can only use bows, you know? I guess uh, improvement on that would give her the ability to use crossbows, who knows? I'm just targeting the Act 2 right now, because like I started this video off with, there's only one play way to play the game, and that is Act 2 mercenary is always going to be tied to your hip. He's the only one that can not only handle his own, but then she give you no just outrageous fury. buffs and auras to amplify your damage so that you're beyond godly. It's not even a joke. But um, yeah, give active mercenaries spears only. It would make sense. Okay? Um, since I guess Act 5 mercenaries sort of, before these last 2.4 notes, sort of played by the same limitations in that their character shows wielding only one a, one, a single two-handed sword, so that's all they can equip, is just that uh, one single two-handed sword. Okay, I just showed you what the damage output of my firebolt was, and now I'm comparing that to one point in static field. It just eats them away. It, it, it's uncomparable to anything else. It's such a low level, level six. That's why the sorcerers, you start out with the sorcerers, because once you get teleport, you just cruise through nightmare, and once you get to hell, I mean, you can jump past pretty much any, any everything and get to a boss and just static field them to death, as long as you don't mind dying and all that. But yeah. Um, Act 3 mercenaries, yeah, I'm a little subjective to this because those are my favorite, just because Diablo 1, the sorcerer, was like my go-to character, even though I like the warrior as well, and the rogue wasn't bad either. You know, there was def definitely different ways to play each of those classes. But with the Act 3 Mercenaries, in this game they're by far the worst and the least used. And that's because they are the worst and they suck. So it would make sense that they're used less than any other Mercenary. Okay? Why not give them a corresponding resistance aura for what their damage is? Because that would make a, ma a master of their element. So if you got the cold you know, mercenary from Act 3, the Iron Wolf, then he would have resist cold aura, okay? Then you wouldn't have to worry about stacking points into that resistance because it would just be there while he's alive and within range of you, and obviously that skill would level up, you know, as he levels up, but yeah, you know, it would just make him more of a usable character. And then obviously the fire one would have fire resist, lightning would have lightning resist, the only one, the only that really wouldn't have a resistance is poison but everybody knows poison is just there to really weaken you for the final blow it doesn't actually kill you um so i guess you wouldn't really be missing on much out on much there um in addition to that 
maybe improve their AI a little and give them skills to combat depending on what their situation is. Take away their melee hit. It's pointless. Okay, I understand it, but it's pointless. Instead, what should happen is they should get a close range skill, a mid range skill, or an AOE area of effect, or a long range skill, or a single target skill. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say the lightning, okay? They introduce the static field. To me, that makes sense. I guess you could see that as the mid range skill since it does level up with that character and the range gets pretty wide on that so that could be their mid-range skill like if a monster isn't within certain you know certain number of feet of them whatever the case they cast that skill okay close range could be Nova you know monsters are within melee range so all he's doing is casting Nova to get those monsters away from him and then a long range skill if monsters aren't within X number of feet of him, whatever the case, or there's only a boss, let's say, then, you know, lightning or chain lightning, you know, and then let him only cast that skill. It just makes sense. Same thing with cold. Give him frost nova for close range, glacial spike for mid range, and ice blast for long range or single, you know, single target. Fire, firebolt, um, enchant, I guess, is pretty cool so maybe that could be used as close range so maybe don't take that melee away I don't know you know don't quote me I'm just spitballing here but yeah that would be pretty cool um, another thing here give Natalia a purpose in act 3 if anybody's paid attention Natalia just shows up for some extra dialogue and then she disappears yeah we get her whole purpose there was to keep an eye on Ormus but give her a quest or give a quest reward or something you know, even for an assassin. Just make her, I guess, useful or have a purpose other than, oh, hey, Natalia's in Act 3, cool, and then she's going to be gone one day. Um, uh, here's one. I don't know if, I'm, if I even like this or not, but it's just a thought. Um, alternating or random immunities. Because certain enemies in Hell will always have a base immunity. So, you know, if you're strictly a fire... You'll never be able to kill the little uh, gremlin dudes with the shaman. You'll you'll never be able to get them because uh, on, I guess unless you can break their immunity. But you know that's a lot of gear to do that. But um, yeah, maybe just randomize it every time, like you do with enemy spawns and all that. I guess that would be pretty cool. Yes or no? <laughs> um, here's another big one. Okay, lightning enchanted enemies. They do not follow the same uh, physics as the other enchanted enemies. Fire and cold. And I guess poison. Yeah, poison too, honestly. When you kill a poison enemy, you get a poison cloud. When you kill a cold enchanted enemy, you get frost nova. When you kill fire enchanted, you get corpse explosion. So why isn't lightning enchanted? or Nova. Why isn't it Nova? Why is it uh, that when you hit them, they emit insane amounts of damage of charged bolt? And the reason for that is because it's bugged, for those of you who didn't know. For every one little spider of charged bolt you see, there could be hundreds of them stacked on top of each other in that one little uh, charged bolt that you see, that you actually see. And that's why it melts you so fast, in addition to lightning also dealing physical damage. It just makes no sense. So give them Nova. Don't give them emitting lightning effects when you hit them every single time. Just when you kill them, give them Nova. It makes the most sense. Fix the issue that's been broken with the game for a long time and you'll make a lot of people happy. Um, here's another, you know, I guess, cool idea. Maybe remove the Act 2 Mercenary altogether Why since she doesn't really anymore. make any sense. Uh, it appears that they were going with Diablo 1 characters for their references on mercenaries. So hey, take out the guy who uses a pole arm and put in the warrior from Diablo 1. You know, then maybe change the loadout for how the Act 3 mercenary uses weapons. Maybe give him a wands or staff, you know, something like that. And give the Act 2 mercenary the, the sword and shield. Yeah, I guess, you know, that'd be pretty cool just to get rid of that Act 2 mercenary. 
um, experience gains or lower the trophy from level 99 to 94 or 95 at the most. Okay, bail runs guys. After 95, you're insane. Okay, I'm just going to be the first to say it. And if you try to get all the way to level 99, God help you. Alright. Um, yeah, lower the trophy guys for console to 94 and at, at the most, okay, absolute most 95 because that is when it just gets treacherous. Um, yeah, that, you know, that goes without saying. It's just silly. For enemies that actually deal lightning damage, maybe fix the charged bolt. You know, I don't care that the beetles still emit charged bolts when you hit them, or maybe just change their skill to casting charged bolt. But fix that fucking bug, guys. I mean, seriously. Um, remove curses when you kill the monster that is cursed. You know, it just makes the most sense because the same thing happens when uh, you, you're fighting an aura monster. You know, the aura effects don't linger. So when you kill the monster that cursed you, the curse should go away. It shouldn't just last for how long or how long the uh, the skill was for what level it was. That doesn't make any sense. Um, maybe introduce wands with teleport so that you don't always need Enigma. You know, you can sacrifice a little bit and use a wand instead of a staff, but still have a shield. Also, another cool one would uh, make. Uh, staffs and wands with static field because that's not a thing because then it would give every character that ability to do what the sorceress does so you wouldn't have to use her as your first character and uh, yeah that's pretty much all I have for the general basis of the game the only other is uh, changes I would make to the druid class since I'm favorable to them because they're the least used that's sort of my, my thing here, guys. I'm pretty casual when it comes to games, but the one thing I do pick up on is hot trends and basically things that get played the fuck out, and I steer away from those things. Because it, it doesn't make the game fresh. It's like, oh, you're just doing what everybody else is doing, but not as good, or maybe a little better. No, what I see is like, okay, the Druid is the least used class, you know, aside from the fact that I actually enjoy the Druid and some of the skills, you know, it's something new. It shakes it up. It's like, oh, cool, there's a druid in here now, you know? Something like that. Or, oh, cool, there's an Act 3 mercenary. I've never seen that before. It, it just keeps things fresh. But yeah, that's that's the, all I have left is just how to improve the druid. But this was the video for my general improvements. Um, leave feedback, guys. Comments. Hopefully you watch the whole thing. I know attention spans aren't quite what they were back in the day. But uh, if you did take the time to watch this video up to this point, I do appreciate that. Um, go ahead and check out my channel. Leave a like, thumbs up, even a thumbs down. You know, I'm up for anything. Um, share your thoughts. Share the video with other people. And last but not least, thanks for watching. Peace out.